Let every heart say amen. amen. Let every heart say amen again. Amen. Love the Lord, give the Lord a hand for this morning. Wonderful, 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 wonderful to see all of you all this morning. Amen. 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 As I look behind Sister Donna, it looks like I see another familiar face as well. Amen. Amen. Mother Dorothy Williams, we're so glad to see her this morning. Amen. Amen. God is so good. And his mercy endureth forever. Amen. 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 We're, we're going to move forward this morning. We're grateful and thankful. Amen. To each and every one of you all uh, for your presence. Amen. I'm going to uh, ask my buddy, uh, Deacon uh, uh, Bowles, to come up. Amen. And give us a word of prayer this morning. I'm going to read uh, with our scripture. Uh, we'll have a scripture, amen. I'll, uh, he'll do prayer, uh, and then we'll have a selection, amen, by Sister Cammie, just to kind of lead us into, amen, uh, lead us into, amen, our sermon for this morning, amen. Uh, and we'll just move forward accordingly, amen. Amen. Our scripture this morning, which will also be, uh, where our text will come from this morning, is Luke chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. Luke chapter 5, 27 through 32. Uh, and it reads thusly, And after these things he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, Follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye yet why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. I read in your hearing this morning, Luke chapter 5, verses 27 through 32. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen. 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 Let us bow, Jesus. Our Father and our God. Yes, yes. The creator, the maker of all mankind. Yes, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come this morning with thanksgiving in our heart. Yes. Thanking you, Lord, for another expression of your goodness. Realizing, and Lord, it wasn't us that woke us up this morning, but it was you that called us by name. Yes. Enable us to go on in your name, Lord. Lord, we thank you for a reasonable you, portion of our health and strength. Yeah. Thank you for clothing us in our right mind. And thank you for the activities of our limbs. And now we find ourselves back out to the house of worship one more time, Lord. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we pray that Pastor Curl say something, Lord, that somebody may come run and say, Lord, what can I do to be saved? Yeah. Heavenly Father, we realize, Lord, we come this far by grace, leaning and depending on your everlasting arm. Heavenly Father, we ask you to continue to strengthen us, continue to bless us, continue to make us the Christians, the, the family that you called us to be, Lord. Realizing, Lord, that we need you and we can't get along without you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we realize that you hear prayer, Lord. Lord, you heard Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Lord, in the burning furnace, Lord. You heard Daniel when he was in the lion's den. And Lord, I know you hear us, Lord, when we call upon your name. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to help us, Lord, because, Lord, we're lost and we're nothing without you. But through it all, Lord, we know that we've got a God that we can call on, Lord. A God that'll rock us in the midnight hour, Lord. A God that'll wipe away a tear-stained eye, Lord. A God that the line is never busy, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for being God and God all by yourself, Lord. Heavenly Father, we stretch our hand to thee. Lord, for no other help we know, Lord. Lord, if you was to withdraw from us, Lord, where would we go? So here we are calling up on your name, Lord, because you said the man shall always pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you for another opportunity thank just to say thank you. Thank you for another opportunity to be able to get up, Lord. Thank you for another opportunity just to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We give thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for those for obedience. Amen. And now we'll have a selection by Sister Cammy. You all can get your scripture or your Bibles ready. Uh, again, Luke chapter 5, 27 through 32 will be where we take our text from this morning. God bless you all. Uh, and I'll give Sister Cammy a hand as she comes. Amen. Amen.
sends individuals around us, amen, who hears what we hear. And when they hear what we hear, and we hear what God says we ought to hear, that God ministers to us all in such a way. I needed to hear that it's okay to wait. Yes, yes, oh God. And that I needed the encouragement that I don't mind waiting. Because sometimes we get in a hurry. And and sometimes God slows us down just to show us the importance of waiting. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Do I got any eagles ready to mount up in here? There comes times when you just have to hold on and seek the salvation of the Lord. But if you wait diligently, if you wait patiently, if you just hold on for a little bit, God will come and see about you. Do I got any witnesses this morning? That I waited on God and he came when I needed it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise God on today. Our scripture text this morning is Luke chapter 5, 27 through 32. We give all praises to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. We thank him for, amen, uh, the Holy Spirit whom he has left, amen, as a comforter. Amen. We uh, give our uh, praise on this morning, amen, to all of our deacons, amen, Deacon Willis, Deacon Dukes, Deacon McBride in their absence, Deacon uh, York, Deacon Terry, Deacon Bowles here with us on this morning, uh, to our deaconesses, Deaconess, uh, uh, Deaconess York and Deaconess Terry who are with us, Deaconess McBride in our absence, to our very beautiful first lady, Sister Carol, amen, amen. so glad, amen, that the Lord made me wait. Amen. 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 Don't mind waiting. Blessings come forward when we wait. Amen. 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 To all of our members, amen. It is a blessing for us to be here on this morning. Amen. Sometimes, again, it just takes us slowing down to really enjoy the beauty of who God is. Uh, I think we're in such a rush sometimes, amen, that we really miss when God is moving in our lives. Uh, so sometimes he has to settle us and stop us and slow us down so that we can really truly see him in his totality. Luke chapter 5, 27 through 32. And it reads, and after these things he went forth. That means that he had to do something, wait, and then he went forward. Uh -huh. And he saw a publican named Levi yeah. sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do ye eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Yes, oh God. We thank you, Master, for another Sunday morning, Father, when we can walk into the house of worship. Thank you, Father, that we can raise our hands in praise. We can open our mouths, Lord, and express, Lord, our joy in being in relationship with you. That, Lord, that as we walk through those doors, Father, we found it, Lord, the same way we left it on last Sunday. But, Lord, we know, Father, that you've been here, Lord, because, Master, on last Sunday it was a little warmer. This Sunday, Father, we feel a, 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 a reaping cool wind, Father. And, Lord, we are grateful, Master, that, Lord, although we have to wait, Lord, you are still working it out. Lord, I thank you, Father, for being God all by yourself. There was nothing, Father, that we could have interceded and done on our own that made anything possible. But it's because you loved us so much, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, who died on Calvary, shed his blood for the remission of our sins, sits on your right hand. Yes, oh God. Now interceding for us that we may have an opportunity to eternal life. Lord, now we are here, Father, before you. 
We understand that we are not worthy, Lord, but because of who you are, Father, you have positioned us, Lord, to hear your word on today. I ask now, Father, that you remove me out of the way, that none of me and all of you will come forward. I pray now, Father, that you will position the people on today, that the words will come forth and they will fall on good ground. Lord, take away from us anything, Master, that we have, may have had thoughts about prior to coming in this morning, and let us recognize that we are in the presence of the Lord, Lord, like never before. That, Lord, you can speak to us, Lord, that you will remove pain and stain and frustration. That we may be able, Father, to call upon your name, praise you with a mighty loud voice, Father. That the world will know, Father, that we belong to you and you belong to us. And, Lord, with that, we will say thank you. Lord, we're going to be short to give you the praise, Lord. Um, let's do unto you. It's in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray and give you thanks. Let every heart say amen. 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 Amen again. I, I, I'm using Luke chapter 5, 27 through 32, but I want us to focus on verses 31 and 32. It says, And Jesus answered, said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh -huh. I'd like to use for a topic this morning, we all need healing. Yeah. We all need healing. We all need healing. We all need healing. We all need healing. Need healing. We've been in a constant stage of change over this last three years with more things coming and some things seeming to remain the same. Uh, the stresses that come along, amen, with such rapid change can create some obstacles and it causes us to kind of lose sometimes touch with our humanity, our compassion, as well as our empathy for others, amen. Uh, 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 we've got to be very careful that we do not lose these things in the midst of all that's going on around us because God is opening doors for us. Amen? Amen. What I do realize is that some of us have more tolerance and stamina for certain challenges that come our way. Amen? But what we have to keep in mind is in times like these that it's the, the duty of the strong to bear the infirmities of the weak. Uh -huh. uh, as I look at this, amen, Jesus understood this. And, and, and as we look over the course of the last few weeks, uh, he's shown us, amen, that uh, 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 he had some interactions with people people that we ought to take in consideration and when we do so amen it will make us better yeah. first of all amen we yeah. saw that there was a crowd that Jesus had to address uh, who were following him because of his healing Jesus moves amen and we understood that it is, uh, he decides to take a boat amen Peter's boat and what he does is he establishes some confidence in Peter amen and, and showing Peter the importance mother uh, uh, William of trusting amen in the power of God then he moves, amen, a little further uh, where he goes from this greater crowd to now uh, he's having a more intimate, amen, setting with Peter, requiring Peter to now walk virtually by faith and not by sight. Yeah. He tells Peter, he says, Peter, I need you to cast your net for a drought. Peter said, Master, we done done all that already. He said, but nevertheless, that's our work. And what I'm trying to get us to understand on this morning is that sometimes you got to focus on the nevertheless part. Amen. It might be that you already tried this and you've done that and I've been here and I've been there. Amen. But sometimes God is just trying to position you now to sit still and focus on him. Ah, uh, next, we see the healing last week of a leper, amen, uh, whose condition had isolated him and, and had others looking at him in a different light. And I don't know about you, amen, but I'm sure that there's been times in my life when somebody looked at me a little crossways, amen, didn't think that I uh, was who I say I am. I didn't think I was being where I should be. And, and I know in my mind, amen, I know in my heart, I wasn't always where I should have been, amen. As a matter of fact, amen, the Bible teaches us that all have sinned and fallen short right. of the glory of God, which means that all of us was a little messed up. Amen. Amen. So I'll tell you that. Say, maybe I was messed up. Amen. But, but it was Jesus who stepped in my life. And when Jesus stepped in my life, he opened doors. And now my messed upness now is my message. And the message, amen, is developing and helping other people to understand that if I trust God, all day going to be all right. Jesus breaks down, amen, the barriers of separation by engaging this leper physically. Uh, it was uh, uh, told that they were not supposed to touch. They were not supposed to do this with a leper. Jesus touched the man. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel when he touched you? Amen. <laughs> Amen. He heals him and then he instructs him. He said, he said, go tell, uh, show yourself to the priest. And so what he's doing is he's also setting up precedent because he wanted us to understand that, that as he is telling us one thing, he had already said, I did. 
did not come to take away the law. I came that the law might be fulfilled. So he's telling him, go show yourself to the priest just as the law had instructed so that others would understand that I'm here. Right. Ah, this was consistent, amen. And then additionally, uh, men bring a man, a man uh, to Jesus. Jesus is preaching in a house, and teaching in a house, and they had to get this man with a palsy into Jesus. So they said, we can't get around nobody else. Mm -hmm. What happened when you can't seem to get Jesus the way you think you should? Sometimes you got to take some unorthodox steps, amen, to move out of what you think is the comfort zone to be uncomfortable. They climb on the top of the house and they drop the man down in the midst of Jesus Christ as he's teaching. Sometimes you got to take desperate measures to deal with desperate situations. Anybody got a desperate situation? Anybody got a, a situation that you need Jesus to be answering and talking to on, on right now? You got to take some desperate measures. Sometimes it ain't uh, just a to come to church on Sunday. Sometimes you have to spend all week on your knees praying and fasting and saying, Lord, I need your help. Lord, can you move this out of my life? Lord, I, I want you to be here. Lord, I need you. Each one of these, amen, each one of these, each one of these, amen, amen, were, were interconnected stories that began to highlight the authority of God. And that's what we've got to keep in mind, Sister Tamika, is that God has the ultimate authority. And I'm thinking that people are forgetting just how powerful God is, and they're trying to rely on their own self. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> these situations, amen, that we all can relate to in some context, amen, all of us have been sick. Yeah. All of us, amen, have been, been messed up. And, amen. All of us got some stuff that God still needs to work out. All of us, amen, are dealing with some things, amen. I know we've been in church, some of us, 20, 30 years, amen. But guess what? You still got something that God is working on if you're still alive and around here so that you can hear God's message. In short, each one of us, amen, we need Jesus Christ to come in our lives. And we just got to get real, real about it and say, Lord, I, I ain't what I need to be, but I so want you to have me. Amen. Lord, Lord, help me to do better. Lord, help me to do better. Lord, help me to move better. Lord, help me to pray better. Lord, help me to fast better. Lord, help me to serve better. Lord, I need you. And what I realize, uh, Deacon Bowles, is that when Jesus comes into our lives, we are far better off on the other side than we were before we got to him. God can and God will address our shortcomings. That's what he does. God is a specialist. And what he does is, God, that, 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 you know how when you sit and you got to go see a specialist and you need to have a specialist to be able to diagnose what you're dealing with? What happens when you serve somebody who can specialize in everybody's situation, diagnose everybody's stuff at the same time, and fix them all at the same time, and we can't praise him no more than what we do? God doesn't overlook our faults. He don't overlook what you're dealing with. He don't overlook your faults. But what God does, he begins to address it in a manner that is specific to each one of our situations. Yeah. You can think in your mind right now what you need God to do, and God can operate on that thing right now as you just thinking about it. You ain't even opened your mouth. Yeah. 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 And what he does, what he does, what he, what he, what he does, Sister York, is that when he does it, he positions us for a favorable outcome. So, so sometimes we don't always see it because what happened is that we want it to be immediate. And God says sometimes you got to wait on it. And when you wait on it, amen, the waiting makes it better for you. I, I, I told you a couple of weeks ago, what does the kid have in the incentive if you ride a Mercedes being at 15? They ain't never got to aspire to nothing higher. So sometimes you wait. And when you wait on it, amen, and then, then the other part of it, yeah, when you go through some stuff yourself, when you got to buy something yourself, when you got to work on some things, you got a better appreciation for it. So when God allows you to go through some trials and tribulations in your life sometimes, that's a better than sometimes hearing what my mama told me, what my daddy told me, what my grandma told me. I got to know this for myself. No one I hurt you. God knows our hurts, yet he provides a framework for us to obtain victory, amen, through intentional acts. He is showing us the importance of intentionality. In other words, everything that you do for Christ, it ought to be intentional. So when I come in this morning, amen, I should have came in with an intentional praise, amen. I walk in praising God. Why? Because I did not know when I left out of here last Sunday that I'd be able to walk in here this Sunday. When I praise him and I raise my hand, I raise him with intention. Why? Because there was some time during the course of the week I couldn't even raise my hand. But now that I walked into the sanctuary, I'm raising my hand in expectation. I'm praising God and thanking him that what could have happened did not happen. And for that, I am grateful. 
today's story. As we look at today's story, it provides hope for all of us, and it assures us that, that regardless of how bad we are, and how bad others think we are. Because you do know that other people think you worse than what you are. You do know that there's some folks think that you just, that, that the baddest thing going on. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. And I don't mean bad in a good way. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Well, well, there's some people out there that think you just dirt. You nothing. Amen. But what you got to understand, I'm chosen by God. And if God chose this dirt, then it's the best dirt in the world. Because God is working on it. So God, 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 God sees us. God sees us as he wants us to be. When God looks at us, he don't look at us like other folks look at us. When God looks at us, he looks at us with the potential that we have. He don't look at what we was. I got any lies in the house, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand, amen. Amen, 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 amen. I got, I, I got anybody that was a thief. I got any, any, any stealers or stolers, amen. Amen, I got anybody, amen, that didn't always do what they were supposed to do. Amen, I, 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 I got anybody that was cracked out, smoked out, doped out, drank out, all that out, amen. I just talk to, I talk to the real people, amen. Because when you think about all of that stuff, God did not see you like other people. When other people saw you like that, they were trying to go this way. But when God saw you, he was trying to embrace you and hold on to you. I'm just trying to tell you that God sees you not like other people see you. And our problem as believers sometimes is that we see people how we think they are and not what they could be. Turn your neighbor say, neighbor, I am what I used to be. I'm better than what I used to be because I let Jesus in my life. So first and first and first and foremost, amen, keep this in mind from the text that in spite of our past, God can use us if we surrender to his will. What God God is looking for people who will just say, yes, Lord. No shape, form, fashion. You ain't got to be this. You ain't got to be that. You ain't got to have that. You ain't got to. He just say, are you available to me? So in the text, Jesus leaves the scene of uh, 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 the healing of the man with palsy. And what he does is he sees a publican by the name of Levi. Now, publicans, amen, were tax collectors. Now, y'all know how y'all feel during tax season. You don't want to pay them. Amen. And probably none of y'all claiming extra kids. Amen. 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 And you know, the tax collectors come and they, they want to take your money. Amen. And, and, and this was no different in the Jewish culture. The problem with the tax collectors in the Jewish culture is that they were working for Rome. And so the people saw them as traitors. Because they were taking money from their people and giving it to Rome. But that wasn't the only problem, the other problem. The other problem was these tax collectors were also taking extra money. So they would take this extra money and then they would make themselves rich and wealthy and profitable and all this stuff. And the people were looking at them, they looked at them almost like dogs and say, how could you do this to your own people? Hmm. They were motivated by profit. I'm saying that because I need some people to be careful. All right, all right. And you might not be in here on the sanctuary today, amen, but, but maybe you're listening. I need you to be careful about being motivated by profit. Yeah. Now, I, I know we, hey, hey, man, there's a bunch of folks out there dreaming that if they had won the billion, yeah. right. what they would have done with it, amen. Yeah. But what happens is, amen, you got to be mindful, amen, is that if you is not a good steward over your hundreds, yeah. then you will never be able to handle the billions and so God is still working on us, amen, because we are actually far richer than we think we are. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah, amen, amen. I hope I ain't messed nobody up, amen. A amen, but we wear most of our wealth. A a a amen, amen, amen. So, so what God is trying to show us is some perspective so that now we understand that I am far off better no matter how much money I have if I have Jesus Christ in my life. I've seen some rich folks, amen, that are miserable. <laughs> Come on, talk to me, amen. A amen. How, how can you win? How, 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 how can you make two million, two billion dollars, three, uh, two hundred thousand dollars, uh, and two hundred million dollars, and then be broke, amen, after ten years? It don't make sense because what happens is that if I ain't managing it right, and if I ain't got Jesus in my life, all that stuff just flows through us. So, 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 we have to understand, amen, that, 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 that 
Jesus is showing us the importance of defying what seems to be reasonable. Yeah. Because Jesus actually stops and talks to the very person that none of the other Jews want to deal with. Man, that, that, that's some good news to me, hey, amen, sister, sister Hurt, because what that says is that Jesus was, was willing to stop by and talk to me when nobody else would. Yeah. Somebody should have shot it right there. Hey, amen. Yeah. Hey, Didn't nobody else want to fool with you, but Jesus said, I'll take him, I'll take him, I'll take him. Yeah, I told y'all, you know how it was when you used to play basketball and you shoot and you hope that you make it the first two shots because then you get to pick the rest of the people. But if you didn't make it, then you got to wait on somebody to pick and you sure didn't want to be number 11. Because they didn't pick everybody, that means you got it. So the first thing you yell out is, I got game. Amen. Why? Because you knew you wasn't going to get picked. I, 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 that might be too old for somebody. Amen. 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 I, I've been there, done that. Amen. And, and so what we look at is that, that, that these individuals being outcasts didn't want to be dealt with. And Jesus said, I like outcasts. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Woo. I got an outcast in the house. Thing. Amen. 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 So, 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 so Jesus, Jesus doesn't do a whole big sermon. Think about this. He don't, he don't make a grand speech. He don't make a whole bunch of noise. He shows up right there with Levi and he says, Levi, follow me. That taught me something. So we spend too much time trying to pursue folks. All we got to do is ask them if they choose, then they got it. Uh, Y'all gonna get that one later. Amen. Many of y'all, if if your mate is for you, you ain't got to spend a whole lot of money to get them. Mess somebody else up because the other one be saying faster. They gotta keep buying and get me. Amen. Amen. If your mate is for you, all it takes is you acting right, and you are having for life. You think I'm lying? You see how many couples you've seen joke a broke as a joke, but they right there with them. So then about the money. It's about the relationship and the commitment. And what God is looking at us is saying, I just need some committed people who will be in a relationship. And if you do what I say, then you'll never have to want for nothing. Amen. That's why I look at it now. I don't want for nothing. Amen. It's some things I like, but I don't want for anything. And when we come to understand that that is predicated upon your obedience to the will of God, then you'll start doing what you need to do to receive the benefits of being in a relationship with it. Amen. Levi, Levi. Here's, it, here, here's how this thing works. Because it never takes, it never states that Levi took any thought about what Jesus asked him to do. He says, follow me. And the next scripture says what? And he left off. Now you got to remember what the left all means. Because I just told you that the publicans were making money. Which means that he probably was had a little stash. He probably had, had I, I, I won't say he had a little, a little stash house, dope house, whatever. He had whatever. He had extra. He had more than enough. He had some things. And as a result of that, the Bible says what? He left out. You do remember there was one young man who said, Lord, I done done this. I done that. I done that. And he said, what do I need to do? Jesus said, give it away. And the Bible says what? He walks away with his head down. But now I've got a tax collector who is supposed to be greedy, supposed to be a stiller, supposed to be somebody who's looking out only for himself. And the moment that Jesus shows up at his doorstep and says, follow me, he leaves everything. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I think this invitation speaks volumes to the influence of Jesus Christ. When Jesus shows up, he shows up already with a reputation. Uh -huh. Jesus shows up already have been heard to have healed. He probably already heard about the drought. And I would imagine that perhaps maybe this publican did what he needed to do to get where he thought he needed to be. But when he heard Jesus, something changed. Uh -huh. <laughs> Within the context of the church, it bids us well to take heed to this. We don't have the right to disqualify people. Without ample justification. That's if there's some stuff that you're doing that we know is against the will of God and we have you in position, then there's a problem. 
So we need to be dealt with. But 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 to stop somebody from serving on the Ursa board because perhaps they don't have a pure white dress. Or to stop somebody from deaconing because they don't have a black suit. Uh, stop somebody from serving because they don't have this, they don't have that. Uh, they, they can't come in because they ain't dressed a certain way. We mess up, folks. Amen. And as a believer, as a baptized body of believers, you got to keep in mind what you was like when you came in. You might have had the suit on, amen, but you was ragged as heck inside. And God took you in anyway. So what we have to do is we have to begin to pray, amen? And when we pray, what prayer does is that prayer will reveal to us what God desires, amen? And then we can work on those individuals while God is working on us. That's why I say we all in need of a healing. Why? Because if God don't heal us, how do we get healed? Therefore, all of us are qualified to serve based on what? God's grace. It's God's grace that gives us the ability to serve. Yeah. Romans 3, 23, all the sin and what? Come short of the glory of God. Ephesians 4, 22 says what? That you put off the, uh, uh, concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust and be renewed what? In the spirit. He says God renews us in our spirit when we open our hearts to receive it. Levi's actions represented what would appear to be a great sacrifice on his part. He's relinquishing certain material wealth uh, and riches. However, we got to consider the cost of gaining stuff over the joy that's associated with gaining God. He said, what does it profit a man if he will gain the whole world and lose his soul? So what we give up to serve God never compares to what we gain. That's right. That's right. I'm trying to help somebody, amen, because they try to hold on to some stuff that God has told them to give up. And when you give it up, you ain't got no further because you ain't done what God told you to do. The moment that you get out of you and you get out of your stuff and give up what God said, give up the way he said it, that's when some stuff going to start opening up, amen. You ever seen a storm outside and you say, boy, it's so rainy, cats and dogs, and then all of a sudden there's a break in the clouds. God is trying to break open the clouds for you so you can see clear. But you still got some storms and some clouds that you still got hovering over you. Kind of like Thick Pan. You remember Thick Pan on uh, uh, Peanuts? He walked around, he saw a cloud of dust with him everywhere he went. Amen. God trying to relieve your dust cloud. So he can open up, amen, so that you can see the sun. I can see clearly now. Yeah. The rain is good. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, so, so what I give up uh, to serve him does not compare to what I gain. And if we are not willing to do so, we forfeit the right to be considered his. Uh -huh. So when you don't give up what God said, give up, you forfeit the right. Yeah. Luke 14, 33, Jesus, likewise, whoever be of you that forsaken not all that he had, he cannot be my disciple. Amen. If you can't give it up, you can't yeah. serve him. Yeah. It's some simple stuff, y'all. Yeah. If I can't give it up, I can't serve it. If I can't give it up, I can't serve it. I can't serve it in spirit and truth if I'm not willing enough to give away some of the other spirits and what I consider to be true. Perhaps the fear of losing stuff and the thought of being robbed of having a good time hinders many from taking a chance on Jesus. However, I encourage you to try Jesus as Levi did. Why? Because serving the Lord is not the end of life, but it's the beginning of living. Uh, uh, verse 29, it shares with us that Levi made a great feast in his own house, and there was a great company of publicans and others that sat down with him. Here's what happened. He says, Jesus has stepped in my life, and with Jesus coming in my life, I'm excited. So I'm going to go talk to the people. I'm going to throw a party with the same people that I work with so that they can understand what change I've made in my life. He has a party. We throw a party for everything except for when people get in like to cry. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that was a song, Sister Carol, when I was a kid, we used to sing it. It, it, it said, how did you feel when you came out of the wilderness? Yeah. And, 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 and one of the refrains of it, it said, I felt like shouting when I came out of the wilderness. Yeah. I felt like running when I came out of the wilderness. In other words, it was saying I was excited by the fact that I was in darkness, but the Lord opened up the light and allowed me to get out. And for that, I'm excited and want to share with the world. Man, we announced everything. We announced everything. We put it on Facebook. Amen. But the minute a person get in like the crowd,
Alright, we'll put that on Facebook. Alright. 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 Come on, man. That, 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 that ain't newsworthy. No, amen. No. A -a amen. 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 What, what if Kansas City's news scene changed? Amen. And, 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 and so the news on at 6 o'clock, amen, ain't talking about all the killing and the murders and all that stuff. But they went from church to church and talking about how many people gave their life to Christ. What would, what, how would the news change? Amen. A amen. Because now we are, we are sharing the good news. Amen. I said, keep remembering. 
That's what you tell them. Tell them, keep remembering, because I ain't that person no more. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so wherever you stuck at in your life on me, amen, you stay there. Amen. I can move down. Amen. And I can move down to God and move. Amen. 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 We, we, we've got to be careful not to ruin uh, the salvation experience for those who have made up in their mind that this change is good. Especially when we look for reasons to not embrace the change and are stuck in dread and discontent. Then folks are, oh, I gave up the Lord, I give up everything. Then leave. Because if God is that miserable, then why do you want to serve him? Man, I, I mean, I, I'm just, this is just pastor, amen. But like I said, I think serving the Lord is the best thing ever happened to me. Amen, amen. And, 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 when I, and when I start serving him, amen, uh, 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 Brother Jefferson, on a full-time basis, it got even better. But see, I was just part-time before a long time. Amen. And, and then all of a sudden, amen, the Lord said, if you keep part-time and amen, it's going to be no time. And I said, Lord, I heard you. And when I heard him, amen, and then that's when the change and the shift start happening. I said, okay, Lord, I'm trying to get a full-time schedule now. Yeah, yeah. Anybody ever had to work part-time until you can get full-time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing like when you start getting them benefits, is it? Yeah. God is good. Yeah. All amen. Time. People now are no different than people then. So verse 4, uh, 30 says, here's what happens. I talked about this miserableness. The scribes and the Pharisees now are in the crowd. They partying with the publican. But now they say, why he hanging out with the public and the sinners? Yeah. Now, I think that may have been twofold, because maybe, amen, the scribe and Pharisees was, was there when they had the other parties. And now they say, well, we ain't going to be able to party with Levi no more. Uh, <laughs> Point number two, amen, it is that they could not see why Jesus, who was supposed to be the Messiah, is hanging out with people who ain't what they supposed to be, yeah. according to them. Amen. Amen. I put that according to them part in there. Amen. It's because they start to question Jesus' intentions and the commitment of the disciple. Why are you going to eat with these folks? These folks are dirty. These people are nasty. These people are this. And what it does is it begins to reveal a greater injustice on the scribes and Pharisees' part because they didn't realize that they were actually in sin. That's right. What happened when you think your stuff don't stink? <laughs> Amen. Lord, See, when we serve God, life becomes clear because we yield to him and allow him to live yes, in us. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. See, when you let God live in you, it's a whole other type of living. Yeah, yeah. The stuff that used to worry you, you don't worry about no more. Yeah, exactly. The stuff you used to be up all night crying about, amen, yeah. you just up half the night crying yeah. about it now. A amen. When you let God in, amen, you understand that, that I'm no longer able to yield my members to unrighteousness because that's sin. So what I have to do now is yield to God, and as a result of that, I go from being dead to now alive. Amen? Amen. And so as I come to a close, I I'm, I'm going to go and get y'all out of here. Amen? Uh, uh, we must keep in mind that God can use us if we yield to his will. And by doing so, we truly start to live a life that's reflective of him, amen, and worthy of living, and accepting that, uh, that, that, that it was our sin nature that put us crossways with God. Sin is what gets us in the wrong place with the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Amen? Amen. So, 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 so with that, sin is reflective of sickness. So, so, because you think about this, I, I have to be sick if I keep doing the same thing. Come on, brother. I, I gotta be sick if I keep going through the same situation. I, I something something is off, amen. If I keep doing the same thing after the same thing after the same thing, getting the same result, and think that something is supposed to change. So there's a sickness that goes on that's resulted to sin, and as a result of that, this sin or this sickness needs to be seen, I mean cured. And as a result, our sickness seals our deliverance. In other words, what I'm saying is that if you ain't sick, Jesus ain't got no need to deal with you. Well, got any sick people in the house? Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Keep in mind that the scribes and Pharisees, this is what I found kind of interesting, Sister Sherry. The scribes and the Pharisees murmured to the disciples. But who asked? Jesus. Why they murmur? Because they don't want Jesus to hear. Be careful with the whispers. Yeah. See, they, they whispering to they whispering to the disciples. Don't y'all know something wrong with him? Why y'all eating with him? Well, oh. Jesus said, 
If you got a question about why they eating with them, ask me. Ask me, yeah. So what he does is he don't go, he just directly answers. He says, here's what happened. He points to this common theme of his work in chapter 5. And ultimately, say, Lord, he says that they that are whole need not a physician. That's right, that's right. So here's what happened. Whole people don't go to the doctor. Right. Well, you should. You should. He says, the ones that I'm here for have to have some issues. Yeah. Now, what's happened is that I told you before, these individuals who asked them, these are the ones who've never had an issue. I told you they stuff don't stink. Uh -huh. They're they, they the ones who don't need Jesus on a constant basis. Right. They're they the ones that call Jesus when stuff rough, but even when they ain't good, Jesus ain't even in the picture. They're, they're the ones who operate with self-diagnosis. You know people who self-diagnose themselves? Yeah. And then they got home remedies. <laughs> self-diagnosis, here's my issue, and I stay at home and work on it and not come to church. Yeah. Amen. 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 So, so he said those who had the audacity to ask why he would be dealing with those individuals are the very people who did need him. If you got to ask a question about something that's going on, it's probably a good indication that you the one need to answer to. Well, so they asked this, and therefore he dealt with the ones who realized they needed help and were willing to go where they could get healed. Uh -huh. Jesus tells us this, that uh, in James, uh, uh, James tells us as he's writing that you draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Right. So what I need to understand is that if I'm dealing with something and I know that God is the answer, I got to draw nigh to God. And when I draw nigh to God, then God will draw nigh to me. Amen. But in order for me to draw nigh to God, because I can't come to God any kind of way. James says, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your heart. So my hands got to be free from sin, and my heart's got to be pure. So when I come to God, I already come with an expectation God can address it because I remove the things that would keep me from getting to him to begin. That's right, that's right, that's right. Uh, amen. Our choice seals our faith, and it motivates God into action. So when I choose God, God said, when you chose me, now I got to move. Amen. I was so glad to hear that. Because when I trust him, then God can move better. When I don't trust him, it hinders God moving because he says, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he said, I got to see you moving in faith for me to move now in your life. Amen. Uh, to further clarify his intentions, Jesus shares this. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. He said, I don't have to call people who I know ain't going to be mine. But I call the people who are sick. I asked that question earlier. I got any sick people in the house. Oh, yeah. and, and, and I'm not talking physical. Because he can deal with physical also. But there's some spiritual stuff that God is dealing with that manifests itself in the, in the physical. <laughs> Let me say that again. Yeah. There are some things spiritually that we do yeah. that manifest themselves in the physical. That's right. So we feel like we're physically sick. When it's actually a spiritual issue. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Let me say it again. Right. There are some things that we deal with in life on the physical that is a manifestation of us not doing some things in the spiritual. Yes. And so as a result of that, we think we're sick physically, but it's not actually a physical sickness. It's a manifestation of the yes. actual fact that we have not done spiritually what God is saying. Right. So God said, I got to get your attention some kind of way. Yeah. So you'll find yourself trying to figure out what's wrong with me, and there's nothing wrong with you, amen, because God said, I'm not working on your physical, I'm trying to work on your spiritual. Well, yeah. What happens when your spiritual is off base, but your physical is sin that's off base, but it ain't your physical that's got you going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to help somebody, amen, because yeah. a lot of the stuff that we deal with is not a physical situation. Yeah. Scripturally, he right. says, what? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said, I'm not wrestling with people. I don't have to argue and fight with folks. I'm dealing with spiritual stuff. Right. And I'm dealing with spiritual weakness where? In high places. He says that the enemy knows exactly how to get our attention. He tries to drive us away from our expected end with God. And the moment that we succumb to some of those foolish moments, what God says is, if you're going to listen to him, I'm going to let you deal with it. And it's not until I say, okay, yes, Lord, I hear you now. And now I'm willing to move as you have instructed me to move. That now he releases those things that were trying to hold us down. The, the problem with the, uh, Job, Job never sinned. That's right. But he had to deal with all of that stuff. Yeah. But he never sinned. That's right. Now think about this. We sin and don't think we got to deal with nothing. So, so as a result of that, keep in mind, some stuff that come your way has nothing to do with your physical. It is all about spiritual. Yeah. 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 
I'm about done, huh? yeah. but I'm going to remind you of this woman. This woman's at the well with Jesus. Uh -huh. All right. Jesus says, I'll give you water that you never thirst again. Amen. She starts to now talk about where they worship. Uh -huh. Then she starts talking about her husband. Uh -huh. And then Jesus corrects her and says that the husband that she with now ain't your way. But it also reveals to her that she had several others that wasn't hers as well. Uh -huh. But then he goes back and tells us that they that worship me must worship me what? In spirit and in truth. So what he said is it's not the place of worship, it's the attitude of worship. And if my attitude is right when I worship, when I serve, then God says I can move on that as opposed to where you sit. Amen. God was so adamant about us achieving, amen, eternal life that over 2,000 years ago he sent Jesus. It was real simple. He sent Jesus, the same one we're talking about right now, the same one who dealt with Peter, the same one dealt with the leper, the same one who's dealing with this individual Levi. And he sent Jesus to save the world. Uh -huh. And what Jesus does is Jesus makes himself of no reputation. He puts on the, the sin of the flesh of man. He wraps himself in it. And the Bible says that he comes to the earth. He's born just like you and I. Amen. He is birthed. Amen. He, he's walking amongst all of the, the world. Uh -huh. He's letting the people see him. He's out there in the midst of them. And the Bible declares to us that even in the midst of all of that he never sinned. Right. And so Jesus' whole claim, amen, because we know that his, his cousin before him says that I come, amen, to call out the vipers for repentance so that they would repent and, and there's going to be one that's going to come after me. And yeah. Jesus comes after him and here we have Jesus who now uh, has went to Calvary and as he goes to Calvary, the Bible says that he experiences pain on our behalf, but he says nevertheless he's going to do what God says do. So he's there on Calvary, and he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Ursing them into his purpose, and there from there, Jesus gives up the ghost. He dies on Calvary. He sheds his blood for the remission of our sin. He does exactly as God has intended, the perfect lamb, giving up blood on our behalf so that we would have the opportunity to eternal life. The Bible declares he's buried. He stays there all day Friday. He stays there all day Saturday. But early Sunday morning, he gets up with all power in his hand. The Bible declares that this is a power, amen, that he's now extending into heaven where he sits on the right hand of the Father and he's pleading and making intercession for us so that every time I mess up, there's somebody that said, Daddy! Yeah. Yeah. I know what it was like to be down there. I know what it was like. They lie over, they cheat over, they do all that stuff. But give them another chance and God is working on our behalf as a result of our advocate, the Father. One day, He's coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming back for a church without a spot or wrinkle. Only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for Christ will last. So we got to make up in our mind that true healing only comes through him. And by doing so, amen, we do what God tells us to do, led to do, and our best living will be yet to come. If you think you've had a hard time, I want you to think about what your life would have been like had you not had Jesus. That's right. That's right. And if you are experiencing some good times right now, uh -huh. I want you to think about what your life will be like if you continue to be obedient. Because yeah. there's greater things that will come yeah. to those who trust God. Yeah. Okay. We've been crucified with him. Galatians, Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yes. Yes. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. So we live because Christ lives in us. And, and, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So that we don't want to make Jesus' sacrifice in vain. That when he offered himself on Calvary and we accepted him as our Lord and Savior, we can now walk in the abundance of blessings because God has made a way for us through his son, Jesus Christ. That's, right, that's, right. that's why John 14, 6 says, that I am the way, the truth, and life. No man cometh unto the Father, but what? By me. So the only way you're going to get to Jesus, uh, get to God, is through Jesus Christ. Nobody else, nothing else, is going to get you there. So trust God enough to say, Lord, here I am. I believe that your son died on Calvary. I believe he's your son. I believe that he was buried. I believe that he rose. I believe he's coming back again. And salvation is your friend. Right, right. We extend the invitation this morning. Maybe somebody this morning who's heard the word of God, made up in their mind that the only healing that I'm truly going to get is going to be one that's going to come from the Lord. Yeah. And when I walk in his expectation of who I am, 
I'll be able to move and breathe and have my being according to his will. Will you come on today? Yeah, yeah. Come by letter. The Christian experience, candidate for baptism. Will there be one on today? Will there be one? Hard night to hard on today. Yeah. Will there be one on today? Will you come?